it would be great for the show if he got to be around the crocodiles, maybe even catching one. It's very easy. And there's no element of danger, right? Uh, well. Ah. Ah. Today we're leaving the country's capital, Havana, and heading east to the city of, um, the city of... Bahia de Cochinos, Playa Larga, Caletón. It's not that hard to say. Here, we're taking on a food rare even in Cuba. You cannot try this dish anywhere else. It's not even allowed. But there's one small problem. Before we can take a bite, we have to catch our dinner. Oh, no! And hope it doesn't take a bite out of us. Oh no, there's another one behind it! First, my plan is to see if we can kind of work around their usual rules and restrictions and uh, have Oro catch a crocodile. Crocodile? No. Why you mean crocodile? Like touch them? Like be close? Uh, someone gonna help me out of this boat? Hola. Hola. In Cuba, business owners and locals wake up early to pick up fresh ingredients from small local markets like this. Today, we accompany crocodile cooking specialist Alexis. We are with the crocodile cooker himself. What is your full-time role? Is that all you do is cook crocodiles? No, no, no. It's more like a seafood cook, but crocodile is one of his specialities. At his restaurant, he'll be whipping up a one-of-a-kind crocodile spread. How do you say crocodile? Coco. Drilo. Drilo. Is it Coco Drilo seafood? No, Marico. He said that he has three flavors. Before cooking, it can taste like chicken or pork, but after cooking, it tastes more like fish. So he's tasted it raw? No, it's not recommendable. He's like, nobody does that, but I, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> right now, we're off to a crocodile farm where he's going to actually catch a crocodile. Hold on a second. Me or we? I need to like tell the camera guys what to do. I hear that from you before. Why you don't do it? Because I'm too fat. When we were trying to jump. No, I don't want to do it, man. Jump? <laughs> oh, bungee jump. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Four years ago, Oro and I made a concept for a show called The Year of Fear. I encouraged Oro to bungee jump, which he wasn't happy about. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to bungee jump because I surpassed the weight limit. Be handsome, man. Now I'm encouraging Oro to catch a giant reptile, which he's also not happy about. Did you tell him that you're going to catch it? He said you were going to catch a cocodrilo. No, it's not impossible. It's not Not looking good for Oro. Right now, he's just cutting right through Oro's hopes and dreams, crushing his spirit. You hate to see it, folks. You hate to see it. Can you translate that? He's like, no way you can catch that. Only people who have born here can do it. It's very dangerous. But he can try. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Thank you. Thank we'll you be back. Good. You'll see all of me, and you might only see part of Oro. I can see Alexis has shaken Oro's confidence. So before we go face to face with the crocodiles, Oro and I are gonna carve up at a back alley factory where they're kicking out one of Cuba's most unique foods. I brought you to a place where they produce cassave. Cassave. Yeah, cassave. It's the most authentic Cuban food that we conserve today. Cassave is Cuban flatbread, a staple dish in this region, inherited straight from the indigenous Arawak people. It played a significant role throughout Cuban history because it required only one single ingredient, cassava flour. After they've created the powder, we come over here, and then my man just kind of cooks it a bit. All right, let's try it out. That's fascinating. It reminds me of eating like a, some kind of cereal that you'd mix with milk and sugar. Obviously, not really any flavor because this is just an ingredient for something more. I think you are not extracting your palate because I can feel flavors. Let's take another bite and let's dip into it. Mm. Very airy, mm -hmm. very light, mm -hmm. and it seems like perfect for soaking up some sauce mm -hmm. and some other flavors. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is made to be in company of the flavors. Yeah, I just think about that. that. We are like Timon and Pumba. You know Timon and Pumba? Yeah, I've heard. We are like that. I just repeat what you say and I say it like this was my idea. Hey, that's a good documentary, but very sad. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. It was a documentary? Yeah. Hmm. I'm getting educated right here.
In just a moment, my dude Oro Oro's looking for a stick. will face his biggest fear. No, it's, it's too much. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> but before that, we're stopping here, El Escapao, where we'll finally be able to try the cassave in the way it's meant to be eaten. I wish those guys at the factory could see us now because we looked pretty silly eating this raw. But now we have the final dish, accompanied by a soft drink, our sponsor, two cola. Are you sick of one cola? This is two, two cola. cola. You shouldn't sponsor this, this is a government owned. Oh, is this government yeah. owned? <laughs> are we allowed to drink it? When visiting Cuba, American tourists are prohibited from spending money at any Cuban government owned businesses, from hotels to restaurants. As far as government owned fizzy drinks, I think that's still a defensible gray area. Oh shit, did I just fuck up my life? I just drank it. You are on your own. Holy crap, dude. What if I get arrested in the US for drinking a government owned soda? Although I gotta say, quite tasty. Yeah, because it's hot caramel. Mm. That's why. See? Let's try this out. The outside is super chewy so huh? You need to be really tender with it. The sausage is delicious. Super interesting texture. If you gave this to me and you asked me what it was made from, I never would have guessed cassava. So very cool. Time to catch a crocodile, and the place to do that in Cuba is here, Criadero de Cocodrilos, a crocodile breeding facility that's been protecting Cuban crocodiles for more than 59 years. Sir, first of all, thank you for joining us today. Welcome, it's a pleasure. Meet Etienne. He's been studying crocodiles here for 17 years. Today, he's giving us a VIP tour, which ends with a very hands-on experience. Considering this is a place for conservation, why is it okay for us to eat crocodile meat? Well, 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 uh, it's a good question. Mm. We have 4,000 animals here. We can use 100 per year for sale the meat and the leather. I mean, we, we use all the money for conservation. Of course, this is super it's, expensive to have like 4,000 crocodiles. We, we, and they're not eating corn. They're no. eating like uh, meat? Yeah, meat. <laughs> But before we catch the crocodile, we must understand the crocodile. So Etienne is showing us more. So this is the reproduction area. Yes, it's for reproduction, but also for a study. So you're watching them reproduce. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Is yeah, that what you're sounds, trying to tell me? You're sounds, making it sound very scientific. Weird, sounds weird, but... Maybe yeah. they need soft music. No, Maybe they no, need, to, like, a magazine. No, mm. These are the world's strongest terrestrial crocodiles. That means they feel equally at home on land as they do in the water. Despite their modest size, they can be highly dangerous to humans. Have you ever been bit? Yeah. What? What should I do? Yes. You bop it on the nose, huh? Yeah, it's a weakness. Oh, really? Bopping yeah. them on the nose is their weakness? You can kill them if you hit them hard in the nose. Ah. Don't give your back. Don't there. give my back. No, Not over. a problem. No, yet. come over here. Put your back on mine. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> right now, I think we're fine. <laughs> Finally, with valuable background knowledge in mind, we're ready to go face to face with the crocs. Oro, listen, you have to approach these. What's the reasonable reason to touch to them? To build courage. I may have a history of pushing Oro into situations he's not totally comfortable with. Holy, no, I don't want to do it, man. But that's because Oro is my brother, and that's what brothers do. They push each other. If he gets bit, we can definitely put this in the thumbnail. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, dude, you don't have to do any more acting. I'm not acting to be afraid, dude. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Look. Oh, I feel your nipple. As Oro's younger, bigger brother, I feel it's my duty to lead by example. Okay, I think I'm gonna get this one right here. Oh no! What happened? You see? I don't know. I'm just gonna pretend like I don't even want to catch any crocodiles. <sighs> Uh -huh. I got one. I'm gonna reel it in. Come on, buddy. Can we involve Oro? Oro said he wants to yeah, get over of his ear. Hold the neck. Uh, I I do that. Yes, you're gonna do yeah. that. Okay. You gotta trust me, man. Okay. Uh, ooh, hold the tail. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> you got this, man. Commit when you do it. 100. percent Ah! Yeah. You got it. I got it. Oro. What? You did it. I did it. I'm proud of you, man. That was pretty epic, dude. I did it, brother. The croc is dispatched and the processing begins. The skin can be sold to further help fund the efforts at this center. The meat is headed to the restaurant where Alexis is waiting for us. 
Do you know how we got this crocodile? Uh-huh. My man, Oro, caught this by hand. <laughs> See? Yeah. We do? See? <laughs> this is impossible, man. <laughs> <laughs> you remember he impossible. said, impossible, right? <laughs> I went and did it. I captured it. Oh. It's small, it's small. He's got you there, it is small. <laughs> All right. Have you been able to speak English this uh, whole time? <laughs> Alexis communicates beautifully through his words, but even more beautifully through his food. Around these parts, he's known as a master crocodile chef. And today, he'll be preparing us three unique crocodile dishes. First, punta. Punta. Crocodile tail steak tips with veggies. Now, right away, before yeah. he puts it on, it smells fishy. But as he cooks it, it's changing the smell. It becomes what? More porky? More chickeny? More grungy. Grungy? Yeah. Huh. Let's try it out. Mmm. Oishi. I like that. Oh my god, it does taste a little porky. Yeah. It's a little bit of everything. But you know what? It looks like high and meat it has class. The meat of the 1%. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. While the grill is still hot, Alexis throws on the butterfly tail meat for a dish I call pork chops a la crocodile. I'm gonna try this right here. If you just gave this to me, I would say this is a big pork chop. Yeah, apparently it looks a little bit like pork with a big fish texture. I'm gonna try it out right now. Mm. This one is closer to chicken, but not exactly. It's like... It's a whole new texture. It's a texture that's kind of between chicken and fish. It's a chish. It's a chish. Next, enchilado. Starting with their in-house tomato chili sauce, then the croc's neck and thigh meat, seasoned with black pepper and simmered until cooked through. Finished with the greens and veggies from the market this morning. Bon appetit, my friend. Mm. 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 Good, my friend. Mm. Mm. If you didn't know that this is crocodile, would you say that this is three different meats? Yeah, I would say that's pork chop, that might be some kind of fish, and that might be chicken. It's all over the place. Actually, after chewing it, it gives me a little bit of potato flavor. So it can be uh, the potato of the sea or the potato of the swamp, right? How long have you had this restaurant? Seven, Seven years. years. He crushed it. Yeah. Well, I'm really impressed. Sir, you killed it. Thank you, my friend. Actually, Oro helped kill it, but you did well with the cooking. Next time on our best ever Cuba food journey, we're heading to the East Coast, all the way to the city of Baracoa, where we'll take part in a Cuban fiesta like you have never seen before. Hey guys, before you go, I wanted to read some of your comments. TWA says, great content, stupid channel name. Oh. Augusto Ceilings says, this is dumb. You and your channel are sh Oh. Patrick Bateman commented, your stupid channel. Oh. There's too much hate in the world right now. The things you say matter. So next time, don't spread insults, don't spread hate. Spread cheese. Do you think I was gonna say love? No, cheese. Spread cheese. You can put it on anything. It's awesome. This is a message so important that we decided to put it on a t-shirt that you can buy now. How was that? I think that could all be cut together. Yeah. Mm. One take? One take. All right, good, cut. And be sure to check out our second channel, more Best Ever Food Review Show for raw clips and deleted scenes that didn't make it into the show. Hope you guys had a good time. Me and Oral will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Mm. A peace. It passed. That's right.